In this tutorial, I'm going to show how I did this text transition. But first, a little background. As of late, I've been doing more video work than still photography, and as such, I've been working less in Photoshop and more in After Effects. To learn the video side of things, I have subscribed to a number of different YouTube channels that do a lot of After Effects and Premiere Pro tutorials. One of these channels is After Effects with Mikey. He does a lot of great stuff, short, sweet, and to the point and I've learned quite a bit from him. Definitely check him out if you're looking for After Effects tutorials. Recently, he did a tutorial on transitioning random numbers to text, the effect I showed at the start. I learned about the character offset animator at the beginning, but about halfway through he took a left turn when I was kind of expecting a right. I followed what he did okay, and he ended up at his destination just fine, but given a previous tutorial he'd done a week or so earlier, I thought it was sort of the long way around. So in this tutorial, I'm going to combine two techniques he showed in a way that I think makes achieving the effect easier. If you want to see his tutorials first, pause this video and click the links here or in the description below. Now let's dive into After Effects. First, we want to create a new composition. The properties don't really matter, you can use whatever you want, but you do want to remember your frame rate, that's important for later. So I'll go ahead and create a new composition. Now we need to create a new text layer and we want to put in here the text that we want to end with. In my case, I'll use Hooked on Light. And this effect works best if you use a fixed width font. So in this case, I'm using Courier New. Then we want to add another text layer. And this time, we want to put in the number of some random numbers, as many numbers as you have characters in the first text layer because the numbers are going to be covering up the text, so we want the same number there. Now we want the text to follow the numbers wherever it goes. We want them to be sitting on top of each other. So I'm going to select both layers and hit P to bring up the position property. Then I'm going to Alt-click on the position property for the text and pick whip that to the position of the numbers. Now if we look at that, now the numbers and the letters are in the same location. We can see if we move the numbers, the letters go with it. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is cause the numbers to, to change as we move through things. So we're going to select a character offset animator and we're going to alt click on the character offset line and we're going to type in time, star, and your frame rate. In this case, it's 24. And now, as we scrub through the timeline, we can see the numbers changing for us. But we can see that the, the text is sitting on top of the numbers, and we don't want that. So now we want to fix that. I'm going to do that by creating an, an opacity animator. And so we want to first of all click on the layer in order to create a new animator. If we don't do that then it will create the animator, the new animator inside this animator which isn't what we want. So you need to click on the layer there and then create another opacity animator and we can see it creates an animator 2 now. That's what we want. So we set the animator opacity here to 0 and our numbers will disappear. And then we can go into our range selector in advanced, and we want to change percentage to index and smoothness to zero. And now we want to set our start to be the same value as whatever is in end. In this case, it's 15. Yours will vary depending on how many characters you have in your text. And now we want to keyframe this where we want the numbers to begin dropping off. So we want to go in, in this case I'm going in about two seconds, and I'm going to keyframe that. And then we go to where we want the numbers to completely drop off, where all the text should be visible. And then we set the start keyframe for that to zero. So now as we scrub through here, we should see our numbers changing, and we should see our numbers uh, showing back up on top of the text. So now I'm going to cl close this and then hit U to see only the items that have keyframes on them. And then I'm going to 
scroll down the hooked on light, open that guy up, and we're going to add another character animator. Because now what we want to do is change the opacity of the characters that are the exact opposite of the numbers. So when the numbers are visible, the characters aren't, and when the characters are visible, the numbers aren't. So we're going to add another opacity animator to the characters, and we want to do the same thing with its range selector, advanced, and set the change percentage to indexed, and the smoothness to zero, and we want to set its opacity to zero. But now we're going to do something a little bit different. Now we're going to, instead of changing the start like we did on the numbers, we're going to alt click on the end, alt click the stopwatch for the end, and we're going to pick whip the end of this to the start of the range selector for the numbers. And what this will do is it'll cause the ending value on the range selector for the opacity of the text to be exactly the same as the start. And now, if everything works properly, if we scrub to the beginning, we should see we should see nothing but numbers. And then when we get to that first keyframe for it, we should see the letters start to appear. And as we move through, the letters continue to appear as the numbers drop off. And that's exactly what we wanted. Now if we wanted to change, say, the length of this time, all we need to do is change the keyframes right here in the start. If we want to make the make the effect longer, we can do that, and everything works out just fine for us. Or we can we can easy ease those or whatever we want to do, and the end for the text will match up exactly with the numbers. And makes it very simple to reveal those text as the numbers disappear. Well, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you found that useful, and I'll catch you next time.